Well, I mean, chemistry is materials, right? So without chemistry, there's no materials. Uh, by all means, uh, th the, the main driver uh, for moving 3D printing forward uh, and adaptation in the manufacturing space at different uh, verticals is primarily driven by two things. Uh, first, you need an enablement uh, through the software development that allows you to generate content. And, and then once you do that, the thing that kind of takes it home is the material development. Well, as you know, DSM Somos is a global player and, and an established player in the photopolymer chemistry, specifically as it relates to the serial lithography process. Uh, we believe that uh, partnering with them would uh, give us a, uh, the resources to deliver photochemistry for our 3SP, the scan, spin, and selectively photocure technology, uh, to deliver uh, highly functional parts that could be used for end use. So, uh, well, uh, we're, we're looking at uh, mainly some of the areas where we can uh, cooperate in the uh, development of new chemistry for the automotive space uh, and in the injection molding space uh, where we can deliver uh, 3D printed uh, tools that can deliver a higher uh, number of units that are injection molded compared to what's currently available in the market today. We think that a lot of good things hopefully will come out of that uh, relationship. What 3D printing does, it, it flattens the global economy. Um, a, a simple example that I've talked about is a, to create a, a custom anatomical crown uh, for a patient takes about 20 minutes for a dental technician, but it only takes two minutes if the dental technician has a 3D printer. Uh, so it doesn't matter what the cost of per hour for a dental technician is right now. What really matters is that 3D printing took the labor cost out of the formula overall load. So I definitely believe that labor cost being cheap one country versus the other is not going to allow for the migration of manufacturing from one country to the other. The, the market in Asia is a very interesting market because uh, it continues to develop and unfortunately and uh, for the Asian market, unfortunately for the uh, 3D printing market is that uh, the, uh, the Chinese uh, industry used to compete on cheap labor and now with the 3D printing you kind of eliminated the labor from being part of the formula and therefore the Chinese have no choice and the Asians have no choice but to actually embrace and acknowledge uh, the uh, use of 3D printing and therefore we're seeing some good adaptation of 3D printing in the market in the last few years. Um, so, you know, we've been in, we were the first one to actually bring a bioplotter to the market and uh, we started the research in 1998, sold our first uh, machine to the University of Vienna uh, in 2000 and uh, we are on our fourth generation bioplotter. Uh, what is interesting about the biofabrication is that it's really moving forward right now as there's a lot of investment. Uh, by governments to move it forward. From our space, uh, we've been able to put it in many interesting universities, from Freiburg University to the Mayo Clinics of the world, uh, and uh, cell gene, cell therapy. So there's a lot of activity that is going on in implants. Uh, bio inks that are loaded with uh, metal is a very big thing. Implantable electronics is a very big deal. Uh, creating cells, creating, uh, uh, using carbon nanotubes, in a matrix in its nature will create enough uh, 3D electrical energy in the scaffolding to allow for bone regeneration. That's a very big thing. So we're gonna see a lot of growth in that area where bone regeneration is going to be more successful as a result of the introduction of uh, the likes of graphene into the matrix uh, and, and the bioplotter printing. So a lot of exciting things are going on. Um, the meniscus, uh, also uh, is, is another area where we've been able to generate a scaffolding which is bioresorbable and actually shoot a uh, cells into it and grow the meniscus that's been torn. Uh, so there are, these are exciting times in the biofabrication and, and I think we're gonna see a lot of these applications that were developed over the last 10 years becoming to, coming to market in the next two to three years.